20 units. Down for a little while as they did that for the hour. Put it right back up and put that back on. So I believe that's uh, pretty much all their installation. At this time, anything else? Uh, I'll, I can go over should any questions come up. Well, a couple things, Mr. Mayor, I'll show you to this panel. Uh, as you know, we did get a proposal from uh, Rutgers and the uh, Robert Woods uh, Johnson School for a survey, as we were requested by the residents. Uh, I have forwarded that to Mr. Caputo. Mr. Caputo has discussed that with the ATSDR as well, too. Uh, it is not, it is, um, the survey would be that they would survey the residents within a mile of the landfill and do a smaller group outside of a, of a mile within the current, what their current health uh, conditions are, uh, whether they were smelling the gas or not. Uh, given the expense associated with it, the potential expense associated with the survey, I'd also ask that uh, Mr. Caputo meet with the county health and see if they could assist in that as well too. So, and at the same time, the ATSDR is mobilizing but it's another two to three weeks at least before they're actually on scene. I know they're communicating with everybody and that's greatly appreciated. So we'll know more in two weeks as to when they're actually coming out. They are doing some data. Uh, they are doing some data search now. We've given them all of our information in regards to the monitors and looking at that background information in there as well too. Um, so that's what we have on that. I know there were some questions about market analysis at the last meeting. I did have an independent auditor look at some of the uh, information that was provided us to the uh, by the residents, and I'll be posting this as well too. But I had our assessor, and I got the auditor report today. Uh, we'll be posting it. Just uh, again, this is um, uh, when I say auditor, I mean appraiser. The township residential market has shown signs of improvement over the last two years. The improvement is area specific and neighborhood specific, uh, properly priced. Listings are typically absorbed within 30 or 90 days. They indicate that it's important that when you do an analysis like this, is that you have a uh, appraisal technique used to find the value of one particular attribute. The appraiser locates two sales where the only difference is the attribute. The analysis that was given to us doesn't really do that, so it's more of a broad shotgun. shotgun. So some areas of town uh, are doing well, others not as well, but you have to do it in a certain methodology to make sure that what you have is accurate. Um, also in addition to that, there were initially 14 um, requests for uh, reduction in assessment from the uh, area within the 300 homes uh, of the mountain and I believe 10 of those are going forward at this time. Uh, that's uh, an indication of the markets. Uh, there was, um, and that's all I have right now. Okay. <clears throat> I had the opportunity to, uh, to speak with uh, uh, Commissioner Martin yesterday and then uh, his Chief of Staff, uh, Magdalena Padilla today, late today. Um, I discussed several items, uh, including first was reimbursement for our bills. I think we've worked that out. He's got uh, an issue, so I think there's, um, I think that'll be fine. Uh, and we should get those up to speed rather quickly. I, I think there is one outstanding item which I think we can address with the uh, monitoring service. Yeah, he mentioned. He called me later after he spoke to you. Okay. Yeah. So it shouldn't be any problem at all. I did uh, talk to Mr. Rose. Uh, I did mention to the commissioner as well some of the concerns and comments from this council and the public in reference to uh, comments that the governor's made in, in certain forums uh, that sounded like he was misinformed or you know had some inaccurate information. And uh, he was he asked me specific, and I pointed out a couple items, uh, and he was going to uh, address it. You know, make sure that there is the proper information out there. Uh, I discussed the access road with them. Uh, the timing was a little tough because they're trying to find $800 million. Uh, 
but we should have a better idea in a few weeks. They went out to bid on the uh, capital process, and uh, you know, he was receptive, but I think it's still trying to find the money uh, with it. And we also talked about some of the visual aspects uh, of, of the project as well. Uh, so hopefully both of those will be addressed sooner than later. Um, and there was a resident that put together a report, rather lengthy report, and I, I responded to the resident yesterday after I spoke to uh, the commissioner, and he assured me that he would have somebody address the report. Uh, I saw an email this morning from that individual, from the resident, um, and I followed up with him when I got home this evening to find out if he was contacted. I did not hear back from him as of yet, so I'm not sure if that actually took place or not. Well, Ed Putnam actually called me around 5 o'clock. One of the things he wanted was that resident's phone number. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I think that's all I had to report out on that issue. Uh, anybody else have any other comments in reference to the Fenimore issue? Okay, at this point in time, we're going to open it to the public, not just on Fenimore, but any issue at all uh, that you might wish to discuss. And uh, please raise your hand. Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, Dan Massey. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Levin Hemlock Lane. So, um, yesterday morning, I addressed uh, each of you, uh, council members and Mayor Riley, by email. Um, and, and I asked you uh, to go forward with preparing a resolution um, and uh, going through the motion of voting and adopting that resolution tonight. Um, I can go into the basis of that request uh, at length uh, at some point in the evening if you'd like, um, but I'd just like to know what the status of that is. Is there a resolution? Will it be uh, adopted? We, we, we have not prepared a resolution. I, I think you said that yesterday. Uh, I sent it yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, there's been no resolution physically drawn up. We could ask for one to be put on our agenda for the next meeting. You know, it's not on our agenda. Um, and I have no problem supporting that. I was hoping, based upon your email yesterday, that uh, somebody from his office was going to contact you to discuss some of those very valid points you made. Uh, did you get any? Did you get any contact from them at all? So, okay. yes, there's been initial contact. Okay. Uh, DEP did call me. Uh, I haven't actually spoken with them. I was at home when they, when they called. Um, I, I need to decide if I'm actually going to call them back. Uh, one of the uh, concerns that I have is I'm not sure why we're now focused on getting in touch with the DEP on this issue. Um, I stated uh, the errors uh, about a month ago. I, I, I don't understand your comment there. You don't understand why we contact the DEP? Uh, that's correct, and in fact, if you look at the email that I wrote, uh, well, uh, my contact are, with the commissioner wasn't just about your. No, I, I, I understand that. I understand that, but there also seems to be a, a, a very immediate push to get DEP to respond to some of the early, um, early errors that I pointed out to them, um, and uh, in the resolution that I asked for, uh, it, it it said nothing about uh, me wanting to get points back from the DEP. Uh, my contention is that we're well beyond that point. We've heard uh, from the DEP, and um, I, I frankly don't understand why we need to hear more from the DEP. We know exactly what they're going to say. Um, and I've, I've spelled it out in, in black and white for you. So um, I, I'm very curious as to um, why well, we're not. We, we were pushing your, your cause as well with the DEP to get it answered. We're actually a little very surprised by the response that you received uh, from the DEP a few days ago. Um, the, the response that said that they had no intention of looking at, at Correct. Okay. That response. Okay. Um, so I would think so that response tells you a, a whole lot about what their actual intention is, uh, about what their reliability is with respect to providing information. Uh, and, and the fact that I think there is an agenda here that many people aren't privy to that needs to be investigated. Um, so I don't see why we're going back to the DEP on these issues. And let, let me give you, because I like analogies, let's say you guys are all turnip farmers and your farm is going down the tubes and um, 
you can't pay the mortgage, you can't feed your families, and it's all because some guy is stealing turnips off a turnip truck. Now I come to you with a big stack of information, and I say, hey, I'm not a detective, but I've got some pictures, I've got some DNA, I've got some fingerprints, and it sure looks to me like the problem is your very own head farmer, Bobby Joe Martin, is stealing turnips from your turnip truck. What's the most likely response? Is it, okay, well, let's take that big stack of papers and go down and see Bobby Joe and, and, and talk it over with him? Or is the response, okay, we need to have this information investigated. Let's bring it to the appropriate authorities that can deal with Bobby Joe. Um, and in the meantime, let's make sure Bobby Joe's not working on the farm. So I, I think that, I'm hoping that clarifies what I'm trying to say. I, I don't understand what possible response we can expect from an organization that I have already, I believe, clearly, clearly identified as not operating correctly with respect to family. We can't fire Bobby Joe. No. You cannot fire Bobby Joe, I agree. What actions have you taken towards getting Bobby Joe investigated? Mr. Mayor, oh, yes. so <clears throat> the response you got was outrageous. Uh, we all agree with that. Okay. You have no interest in speaking to the DP, is that the point you're trying to make? I think you're yes. missing the point. So the DEP, excuse me? I, I, I think you missed the point. No, That's I'm not trying to understand what you're trying to say. So if the DEP wants to talk to you now, because it was such an outrageous response in the first place, you have no interest in speaking to them, is that correct? I think my point is that they have already responded. I'm not sure what we can gain. I, I, so that's and, a no? Let, no. But you don't want to speak to them? No, and let me, let me clarify this. The initial email that I sent to the DEP was sent an hour after I began reading their data package. So they, I asked for data. They kindly provided me their data package and their air model. I started going through it. And an hour later, I had an email ready to go saying, hey, there's something seriously wrong here. There's no need to even look any farther. What's going on? And I, so I sent an email, and I, I made it clear in the email, this is just some initial points. Um, I'm sure there's lots more, but I'm not going to go through it until we find out, you know, did you send me the wrong data package? I mean, it was that blatant, right? Three weeks with poking from myself, poking from the township manager, deafening silence, okay? And now, uh, in the meantime, I've done a lot more analysis, and I'm sure you've all seen my 116-page tone that may be inappropriate in spots, but I think very, very clearly defines some important points, and I don't think there's any further question to ask of the DEP on those points. Okay, yeah, and I, and I agree, and I think the work you've done has been uh, excellent and thoughtful. So, I'm, I'm with you. All I'm interested in knowing is whether or not we should, if the DEP says they will speak to you, you don't want to speak to them. Is that correct? Well, here's the other question. Why is this now my battle? Oh, I, I believe. No, 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 there are, some, there are things we can do, that's all. One of them, one so of them is what? the mayor has the opportunity to have the DEP speak to you. If you don't want to, I'm, I'm not suggesting whether I'll, I'll I understand be, that you happy. don't want to or not. I just want to know whether or not that's an option. You I, I'll be very happy to speak to the DEP. Okay. What I would like to know is what the township expects to come out of that conversation. Because this, frankly, should be your battle, not mine. I have done a whole lot here in giving you some clear evidence on a silver platter that I think is sufficient to just blow them out of the water and say, look, there is, if, if you believe the conclusions in my paper, and I don't know if you do or not, but if you do, there is no other alternative <coughs> that you can, or no other conclusion you can reach than the design of remediation is absolutely flawed. Because as you saw in my paper, there's three possible answers here. Number one, their design is based on a hydrogen sulfide generation model that is completely bogus. And I mean, we're talking thousands of times off. And so if that's the case, clearly, we want to put a wrecking ball over the thing and start over. However, if it's based on some other data, then why did they need to recreate the hydrogen sulfide generation package and if they did do a second spin, 
did they not notice that it's different by a factor of 10,000, 100,000? And how do we have any confidence in this other data, which by the way we haven't seen, on the design of the landfill? Or the third option, which is the most unconscionable to me, and which I suspect is what's happened, is that the design of the landfill is arbitrary and not based on any data whatsoever. And I can't believe any of you would sit there and accept that as a possibility for your township, for the health, for the well-being of the public, for the prosperity of the community. I cannot believe that your response to me, Mr. Mayor, is let us know how the call with DEP goes. Actually, we could go on and continue with the conversation. Um, quite frankly, and if that's all you got out of it, I'm sorry. Um, but our, 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 professional, our professional has reviewed the DE plans as well, DEP plans as well, for the capping of the, of the site. Uh, the, the complete plans, including a basis on which to estimate the amount of sulfur, the basis on which to estimate the amount of hydrogen sulfide being generated, because... No, no, not, from, not from that air model that you're talking I'm about. I'm not talking about air models. I'm talking about if you're going to remediate something, you need to know what's in there. That's basic science. If you don't know what's in there, you cannot properly remediate it. Right. So right. have you seen it? Right. I'm just telling you, you have seen yeah. that data. And if you have, I would love to see it. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't tell you Good. specifically, and I do rely on a professional because I am not a scientist. Uh, but uh, Chris or Tony? Uh, he did, Tony, if I'm not mistaken, he did do some analysis, and it's in the report in regards to the modeling. A, a new report. No, no, no. The report that, the report that uh, Mr. Zelling did on behalf of the township, he did look at the, uh, he did look at the numbers that the DEP provided in regards to their estimates for the uh, H2S. Okay, I don't, I don't, I'll have to take a look. I don't recall seeing any, any generation numbers in there. I think our, our report and what the DEP proposed is on our website, correct? Correct. The, the DP's closure plan is on our website. Sure. Do do any of you have a uh, a doubt or a disagreement with the conclusions that I I, I postulated in this paper? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not a, once again I'm not a scientist, so I read what you took it and okay. took you at your word that. This is what you believed, and I wanted an answer from DEP about that. Okay. I think that was Chris pushing on our behalf to get that answer so from the DEP. That's a fair and, and while I asked the same thing of the commissioner, who was vaguely aware of what transpired, so it wasn't it wasn't a, me calling him okay. to take care of Dan Massey scenario. It was I brought that up as a third point because I found it a little insulting. So uh, for the township, and I appreciate that. And that's a fair answer. Um, so. If, if you're not a scientist and, and, and you don't, you're not sure, number one, I'm not sure DEP are the people to ask uh, on whether my analysis of their stupidity is correct or not. And number two, um, I would expect all of you to be very excited about this and say, well, look, if this guy's right, we really have something. So let's go to a bunch of experts and, and, and let's see what they say about it. And I'm assuming by the stairs I'm getting that none of that has been done. That's about that right to get a reaction from DEP, yes. as the mayor said. Why, why DEP? Why, why, how, how would you expect well, to get a reaction? First of all, we don't know who or why they sent you the first letter. Maybe somebody is, you know, like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. So let's let the right hand look at it, uh, as the mayor did. Excuse me one second. Mayor, uh, uh, Commissioner Martin, let him find out, get to the bottom of it, and re re respond to it to us. Councilman, have you seen what was sent to me? It, 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 it's yeah, not it's not in error. It's clearly the hydrogen sulfide generation model for Fenimore landfill created. Again, I'm not a scientist. I take pictures of landfills. Okay. All right. I, I know what they do to. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you know the there's, there's no right hand, hand left hand issue here. This I'm talking about the DEP. All right. Understood. I, I would want to give Commissioner Martin and the DEP a chance to look at that help your report. I don't know if anybody looked at it. I doubt it. I think they just gave the wave of the hand and sent you an email. That's what I think. So I'd like somebody to react to it. Okay, so, so I, I've taken up a lot of people that want to talk. I've taken up a lot of time. What I would like to know briefly is um, what would you like me to do going forward with respect to to these issues that I've had? I, I can I, talk to the DP. I, I was, I, personally, I was hoping, and I, I, I was 
is why I try to facilitate the, the conversation because some of your things, that, as I read your report, uh, were based on assumptions um, and probably fairly said you kind of put in the rationale on why you assume those things. But I was hoping uh, that a conversation would at least have a better understanding between the two of you if there was any kind of understanding. If there's not at all, I, I get it. I mean, okay. so it, is, so it is what it is. And then, you know, they, maybe they support your rationale, and then we address why, why that was done. Um, and I think what you're saying is they base their opinion upon that, that mapping uh, of capping, and I'm not sure that that's the case. I think that that came into play, it seems, uh, much later in the process. I think it did too, which tells me there was no data for the capping. Pardon me? So I, I agree. And I, I think that there's no data for the capping. Yeah, I, I think. And, and therefore, why would that DEP go on? Well, there is data for the capping. There's, there's clearly no hydrogen sulfide generation data. There's no data on the amount of sulfur content in the landfill. Because if there was, they would not have had to have Geosyntec go and redo an entire study and come out with completely bogus numbers. Why would they do the study if there was existing data? There was information on, on the amount of sulfur and yeah. sulfur production. I did, you you actually gave three different scenarios. So I maybe did. right maybe the DEP needs to explain a couple of those other scenarios. I think they certainly do need to try right. and, and that would be part of the basis of your conversation. And the you you could bring clarity to which one you actually think is going on. I'm not an authority. I'm, no, I'm, I'm a guy who comes up on the mountains. But you did a very good you did a very good job. And that's that's one of the things that's solicited. <laughs> And then if it doesn't hold through, then in two, you know, then the council can bring this back up with consideration at that time. And, and I, I would strongly encourage you, and it seems like you've done a lot of work on it already, but to go to our website and look at um, the, what our professional said and uh, what the DEP initially said as well. Maybe, like I said, I think this came about much later in the process and wasn't the impetus for the, the capping, but I agree. So, I think we all agree on that. All right. All right. That's all for now. Thank you, Mr. Master. All right. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard on anything? Please raise your hand. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Uh, good evening. I'm Philip Sachin, Dan Elliott Court, Voice Big. Uh, about a year ago, we, you know, we had a bit a bad smell at this time. You know, I was one who was calling the DP every day, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't smell anything anymore except a couple of days. But when I see the data on the web, it looks to me the numbers on the on the monitor that we had are about the same as when we had when I was noticing the smell last year. Are those numbers, those figures accurate? Or we are getting poisoned by something else now and there still is even as age to rest. No. We've had some issues with monitors here and there. It's usually one monitor at a time, but Mr. Rass uh, could probably explain it a little better than I can. When you go on, when you go on the web, and when you go on, are you just looking at the daily numbers, or are you going back? And yeah, I, looking at I, the, I, I did not make a big study or anything. No, but if you go back and look at each monitor, and I was just got, we just got them today, and we post them every Tuesday. If you go back and look at the yearly history. I think it actually starts in June of last year, 2013, yeah. going to now. You can see that the daily average on almost every single monitor has gone down, uh, and some of them significantly from last year. So if you go on, you can look, and that's from June of last year because we do not have the, the we don't have the times. Of course, but you know we don't have five five from last year. But you can see that when they put the oxidizer in in October, you can see that the actual daily average numbers went down, and that's one of the reasons that you're not getting the smell. Like the mayor said, there are there have been a number of incidences where either the, the, the system has gone down for repair, it went down in a large uh, in the big uh, thunderstorm we had a couple of weeks ago, where you do see the numbers go back up at that time as well too. Which are accurate, and then there's been other times where the, there's been monitoring. There's been what they call uncharacteristically high readings, which are really anomalies because you got to remember this is parts per billion. Yeah. I mean these are very these are very sensitive machines that are being read, but you'll see if you look at the charts, the actual trend is, is uh, significantly different, uh, significantly lower on a 
number of monitors from last Yeah, year. they are some out, but I see still some seven, some five, yes. some that. And, you know, when, uh, frankly speaking, when I was calling DP, we had four, three. You so, uh, if you at least, it's not, I say, I don't have his monitoring my house. Right. I look at monitor somewhere else, maybe different, but the it, old, me, The old factory, if they say 10 parts per billion is when you, the normal person should smell it. So if you were calling complaining, you may either have a very sensitive nose or you actually, could, or actually at that time, the numbers were higher. So what I'd say is if you don't, if you can't recall what the numbers were five or six years ago, I'm five or six years ago, several months ago, then, uh, you know, you just have anecdotal, it actually will give you those numbers from many months ago. Yeah, the only, the only thing is for me, they seem still quite high or not smelling And we all like it to be zero. For everything being rosy peach. We all like it to be zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a public course to be heard? Yes, sir. Bob Medeiros, Four Nellon Drive, Bloodwood, New Jersey. Gentlemen, uh, after this past week and uh, reviewing the, uh, Dan's uh, paper and all, it's proven four times over, without a doubt, that with no disrespect to your expert, that he's completely unknowledgeable of what's going on. One, it's been proven there's two streams. As a matter of fact, there's four streams underneath the landfill. It's been proven that the scrubber is poorly designed and needs completely re-looked re at. It, it's proven that the density of your expert, which he claims is 2,000 pounds per cubic foot, it's actually 200 pounds per cubic foot, which throws the, my entire estimate that I gave you brings it right up to light, where it takes his and throws it out because it triples the amount of what it takes to truck out. You have proof on how to truck it out that is nowhere near $48 million. It's in the vicinity of $12 million. You have proof that the scrubber does not work. You have proof that there's water underneath the landfill, which the, the sheetrock that's there is going to be continuously wet. And I have proven all facts. As a matter of fact, I have a survey map of the landfill showing four different streams running underneath the landfill. And I'll be more than uh, glad to show you this. My question to you, gentlemen, what are you going to do about it? You just got all the proof in the world. I'm putting you on the carpet. What are you going to do about it? Start off with some uh, First of all, in reference to the streams, right. um, our engineers, the managers, been out, and I'll let Chris answer for himself. But uh, you know, there's no evidence that there may have been at one point in time, but I think no, there no. were. It's still there. Here's the Fenimore landfill survey map with the streams underneath. It says, Robin, is this something new? Or is this, this is something that, was, that I've researched and, and brought out. Look at the copy of, of, the, of the blueprint. Fenimore landfill. Why do you guys fight us so much? Pardon? Why do you guys fight us so much? All right, fighting. Well, not. That's, that's the proof there for the water streams. Um, I, 1994. I, I, this, you've given us lots of information in the past. All I can tell you is we'll look at it again. We do know that at one time, going that many years, that there were streams across the it's, face of the landfill. It's still and there. They were, and, they, and they were diverted. At, you know, look at the bottom there. one. That was the bottom one is the one that was diverted. You see it right there on the map. It was diverted. Now look at the top of the map. But we're not on, on the north portion of the map, it shows you four separate streams. Have you? I'm going to also give this information to Joe Dunn. Have you given it to Joe? No, Joe I have not. I, I presented. I I follow the I follow the the uh, chain of command. I bring it up to you, 
allow you to, to can I assess. Have, can I you can have it. Allow you to assess it. I'll get a copy from you later, though. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, we'll bring we'll make you a copy. Joe, because the reason I mentioned Joe Dunn is because when it comes to soil water conservation, that is what the Morris County Soils Conservation Commission is supposed to do. They're supposed to look at water bodies. They're supposed to look at uh, storm drainage and that material. As you know, they have a hearing. I think some of you attended their last hearing. They have another special hearing coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to give this to him, and I'm going to tell him that I'm going to suggest to you that you reach out to him as well, too. Great. That's because number one. Second, the dest uh, dest destiny of the load for the garbage. It is 200 pounds, not 2,000 pounds. Again, that would put trucking it out in the $40 million bracket instead of the 12 to $13 million bracket which is within reach and less expensive than maintaining the landfill for 30 years. What are you just going to do about this? The scrubber, the landfill, the, everything. You, you've got to do something. The proof is right in front of you. You have to take this directly to the governor or somebody above who, who would put a stop to this and investigate it. Investigate it. They don't. They're not doing their proper jobs. They don't know what they're doing. Point blank. Are you going to follow up on it, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Well, parts of it we can. I mean, it is a DEP project. Which part? Well, we're going to follow up on the water issue. Okay. And um, the trucking out issue, we can, we can talk about it all day. Uh, whether your numbers are right. Unfortunately, we weren't given the access to find out how much was in there. Uh, so we're going off. Okay, yeah. Here, here's, going off here's, the, here's the second side of the coin, Mr. Mayor. It's either live with this for 30 years because they claim it's going to cost $48 million or present the facts to them and say, hey, listen, re examine your calculations. It's going to cost the, the taxpayer $40 million of, for nothing, where it would take. 12 to 13 million dollars to truck it out. It's your, you're there. You got the ammunition. Go run with it. Yeah. Why? Why, Miss, Mr. Sherset? Well, how we can't tell them what to do legally. I'm not asking you to tell them what to do. I'm telling you to go there and question them and tell them these are Publicly. what our citizens are giving us, facts, figures, numbers. Why are you insisting on prolonging this landfill for 30 years where it could be taken care of within not, not five years as the expert claims, but it could be taken out in, in uh, Two years. 12 and a half months. 12, and, no, 13 and a half months, I, I, I stand corrected. Thirteen and a half months it could be trucked out. If you calculate the load with the trucks, here he's got he's got sixteen trucks a day in his estimate. Sixteen trucks a day. You know what that is? That's that's nothing. They brought in fifty to seventy-five trucks a day. Fifty to seventy-five trucks a day, they brought it in. You get four bucket loaders, you could you could load one truck. With two bucket loaders, load, load another truck with two bucket loaders, only open up an eighth of the landfill at a time so the gases will not release. Your expert does not understand or is completely ignorant of what needs to be done here. I implore you, take the bull by the horn and go after these guys, or you're gonna be you're gonna be there for 30 years. I'm sure you don't have an answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good job, Bob. Bill mm. Morocco, Lazarus Drive in Ledgewood. Um, I promise I'll make this one short. 
first thing, uh, you, you, you said that you had spoken to Commissioner Martin. He was going to inform the governor of, of some of the, um, the things uh, that the governor perhaps misunderstands. But I think the problem is with Bob Martin. Uh, I don't know if you heard his testimony before um, the Senate Budget Committee. I don't know if you actually heard his testimony, but the things that he said before uh, this group of senators, um, you know, you know, were erroneous and, and deceitful. Um, you know, he, he didn't mention anything about the maintenance costs when you know he was telling them about the, the budgets of the projects. He was comparing uh, the capital cost of this capping to you know the estimate they had they had provided you know, you know for, for the excavation. And then he told everyone they planned to make a park on top of the land. <laughs> and they joked about it. And all those senators in there, you know, now believe the DEP is doing this great job and the DEP is, you know, doing this in, on a very uh, limited budget and they're they're bettering our community. And, and, and we all know that's not possible. They don't even own the land to even uh, propose a, a capital redevelopment, number one. Number two, this plastic liner prohibits uh, any type of redevelopment. You can't put anything on top of it. So if he's telling his senators this, you know, they obviously have an agenda that they don't want anyone sticking their nose in their business, and they're trying to make this look very, very pleasing so no one asks any questions. Do you agree with that assessment? About the, the park? About the things that Bob Martin said and why he said them. Yeah, I'm going to look into it. I, I, uh, I saw your email the other day. I have not had a chance to look at it. Um, but you're right. I don't think it can be a, a park the way you're describing it, if that's what he said. Right, and, and again, I think, you know, I'm going back to Dan. I'm not asking someone to have Bob Martin clarify to everyone that a park can't be built. What I'm saying is that this is just another piece of evidence, another another piece out there to show, you know, how do we know what we're getting from this guy is the truth? If he's lying and, and telling the truths and leaving out important details to his own Senate committee. At this point, I don't know what to tell you about that specifically. Does that concern the council? Has the council uh, solicited help from senators outside of Senator Bucco? Has the council wrote press releases? Has the council gone public with this information and asked for some help and asked for some support? You guys aren't going to win this fight. You're not going to win this with just you guys. Unless you're happy with what they're doing, then what you're doing is fine. But it doesn't look like you're happy with it. We're certainly not happy with it. And you're not going to do it yourself. So what are you going to do to get some help? What can you do to get some help? Well, I, I, I think our professionals have spelled out where their advice was to us as a township and, and the township has supported uh, the capping process. We're, we, and I don't want to get into the park aspect of it. I don't, I don't want to get away from the capping aspect of it. The capping aspect of it, uh, this council has agreed uh, that that is the best direction to go based upon our professional's advice. Uh, and we've taken that. There are some other issues that we have with some comments that have been made, um, but that doesn't change the core capping aspect of it. So I'd like to find out what this, you know, is it more PR or what is it about? I have no idea from their perspective. I have no idea why they told the senators they're putting a park up there other than to try to make it sound rosy. Um, just like, not sure why they have that map that Mr. Massey uh, tore apart and, no time at all. Well, I don't think it's only the map. I mean, you know, I actually did read, you know, those reports from um, uh, Geocentric and and, um, and, and and Berger, and I did read the report from, from your town expert, and what I got out of it is that Robert Zelli said he didn't have enough information to really make a recommendation because there were a lot of assumptions out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we don't know the, the sulfate content of what's in there. And the sulfate content of what's in there is what's going to determine how much gas is generated. That's undisputed. You don't have to be a scientist to know that. So if you're throwing around assumptions on how much sulfate is in there, you don't know how much H2S has the potential to be generated. How could you size a mitigation system? 
And how could Robert Zelli check any calculations if he doesn't even know how much is in there? That's why you wanted to do the core sample. So how do we know that this is the best decision if we don't know how much sulfate is in there? There could be a tenth of what we think, and then maybe the excavation is uh, of most of the pile easier than we thought. There could be five times as much, which may support the capping, but maybe it supports a bigger system than they're designing. Which is why you didn't come out with the final definitive recommendation. So I, mean, I don't know how you came up with the definitive the capping, recommendation. You supported the capping aspect in his report. I understand. Um, and, and, and most people support the capping aspect because the trucking it out scenario uh, hasn't really been tried in any large format like this. First time for everything. And, and, um, and we've seen no evidence other. I mean, look, I, my, my questions tonight, so, yeah. I'm not trying to lobby for trucking it out tonight. But, you know, if, if we're going to talk about it, you know, contrary to that, I haven't seen any evidence, scientific or, or factual, where we're trucking it out wasn't successful, or, or any modeling that's, that's accurate that shows that it would be too dangerous. I mean, I see opinions, and that goes for everyone. That even goes for your expert. No one has any models that really hold any water or any scientific calculations. And I don't think anyone can make that determination because they don't know how much sulfate is in the landfill. That's a huge problem. And I wish it was presented that way to the judge when you had asked for the core sampling. That it wasn't just that you're curious on what's in there. It's we can't know if what the DEP is doing is correct unless we know the amount of sulfate. And no one knows that. And I think if someone presented that, the judge may have said, well, that's a good point. No one has done that. I hope that Mr. Fredericks does that. And I'm sure he will because he's pretty thorough. One of the things that, um, when I had conversations with our expert, one of the things that we talked about, and he clarified for me, and which a lot of people I think are missing tonight, is that even if the state were to dig it out, okay, to truck it out, take out all that SCP had delivered there and incurred the cost of trucking it out. Even if we assume everything that was said tonight is correct and you could do it for less, okay? Once they did that, the landfill would still have to be capped. So now you would be right back to incurring, the state would be right back to incurring the, the cost of capping it after digging it all out. So, you know, you're not just looking at, you're not just looking at saving the money from digging it out, because in the end, it still has to have a gas extraction system, and it still has to be capped. So, that's part of the problem, I think, of what's going on here. That, and combine that with the fact that throughout the country, and quite possibly the world, Whenever this situation has developed in any landfill, they've capped it. They, no other community, no other scientist has re made the recommendation to dig it out. And I think Mr. Zelli said that at the, at the uh, public hearing that we had when he presented the report. And he made that pretty clear to me a couple of times during the course of me feeding him information that was supplied by the residents, supplied by you. Um, so I just think we, you know, people have to recognize that that's part of the process. You know, it would still, in the end, if we dug it out, it would still have to be capped. No, so, I, 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 respect, I respect those comments, but I, you know, I know we're all on the same page, and I even heard Bob Martin say that it wasn't, didn't come down to cost, that it came down to safety. And if that's true, then we have to take the policy shot. And as far as the safety goes, I think what Mr. Mossy is trying to show is that what they're saying may not be true, number one. And number two, you know, you're right, a lot of these facilities, these operating landfills are, are capped. But a lot of these aren't abandoned sites. A lot of these are businesses that, you know, have presented themselves problems. And, you know, we've been through this before. You know, these are facilities that have motivation to, you know, keep their emissions down and they're generating revenue, and they're going to use that revenue to keep their systems going and to keep the mitigation systems operating and keep the cap maintained. We don't have that. Um, these operating landfills probably don't have residential communities that are this close. They're probably not 
um, in close proximity to class one trout, trout producing waters. They're probably not in close proximity to Ledgewood Pond, which is part of the watershed. They're probably not a highlands preservation area. So this is a unique situation. I don't think those, those um, aspects sh should be discounted. And I don't think the comparison think, is fair. Yeah, and I don't think he did discount them. I mean, well, I don't think the comparison in, is fair. He, he took into he took into account, you know, all of the issues that you raised because I've given them to him. I've gone over them with him. So all of those issues that you raised, Mr. Zelly thought about. They made phone calls over. They talked to other experts about. They worked with the professors at Rutgers. Um, you know, I, I don't think he discounted any of that stuff. Um, in fact, are you going to bring that up? It took so long for the report to be completed because I kept hitting them with additional information that was supplied by many of you and from and from outside sources. So, Bill, for the most part, you know, and we've heard these this exchange before, Bill. Yes. Um, it's a little misleading, I, 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 and I'll speak for myself. We didn't endorse the state's plan. Here's what we did: we found zero evidence that trucking out the, the materials would be the safest way to protect the community. So we were left with the only option that was on the table, which is what they're doing now, <coughs> meeting it, which by the way, is the, for us, getting to a solution as quickly as possible for the community, as opposed to following the trucking it out solution, which is what up until recently the community wanted, yeah. which would have been a complete unknown and subjected the community to dangers we weren't aware of. And so the only decision we could make was to go with the remediation plan that's going on right now. It's the fastest way to get things done. Now, does that mean we don't agree with you? We agree with you on basically everything you're saying. But this is the option that's available to us, as opposed to leaving it and doing nothing, which I think everybody in the room believes would have been unacceptable. And us taking a leap of faith on a trucking out solution, <coughs> there isn't a shred of evidence, would have been the right way to go and might have subjected the community to even more health risks. That's what I based my decision on. You base your decision on that one day this equipment's going to fail and. Again, we don't, I don't disagree with those points. It could fail. This may, the pipes could break, it could go on for 30 years. I don't, that's not something I disagree with. So, well, but, but we had to make a decision on what we would do for the community <coughs> and protect their health and their safety. That was the choice on the table. And there was simply no evidence trucking it out would have been the safest way to protect the community. I think it would have been reckless for us to have made a decision based on zero zero information about trucking it out. Based on what? Please, 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 one at a time. No, I, I, I don't think that we have zero information, but I think that you need, you need and you should be investigating you know, more information because there were a lot of assumptions that left questions open, and I agree with you. I, I think that that more research needs to be done and there's time to do it. I'm just surprised that you're not you know, investigating further, especially since your your own experts said that they're working on the information. Let's put it back to work over the next month or two and fill in the blanks and then see what the best answer is. Because when you said you support the capping, I didn't see based on some conditions, like the state giving you a surety bond of Twenty million dollars, and the judge uh, guaranteeing that the that DEP is going to control the site, or that they're going to build a perhaps a parallel train in case it breaks. So we don't even have a minute of downtime because we have had a lot of breakages in the equipment. Just in, in March alone, we had the SO2 spike that was five times the EPA limit. That's a federal standard in excess of of the the ATSDR standards. We don't want to live like this for the next. You know, even if it's only seven years, we still have the smokestacks in our backyard. And, you know, right now we're so far away from, you know, I know you had the conversation with Martin disguising the site and the access road. To me, we're so far away from that. We have bigger fish to fry right now. And I don't see any of those issues being addressed. And your own expert, and I'm going to read you a quick email, and I, I promise I'll be done, but your own expert, expert from Rutgers, 
Interim efforts for hydrogen sulfide emissions control are not up and running yet, but are expected to be tested soon. The scrubber for sulfur dioxide is not in place, and the larger combustion unit is not expected until the end of October. The long-term solution appears to be leaning towards a permanent cap, but our assessment is that should, there should be staged removal of the material at the landfill with the interim solution in full operation during excavation. We will see what the DEP and its contractor provides as a final set of recommendations. <laughs> Did you talk to your expert at Rutgers? Did you get his opinion? The experts at Rutgers and Mr. Zelli had numerous conversations, and in the beginning, you are correct. That was the initial, um, when we first started having meetings, and they were first looking at some of the data, um, that was an initial approach. You are absolutely correct. But the more that they dug in, and the more that they dug in, the more that they found that capping was the accepted, well, the accepted method for remediating a facility like this. Wow. Now, find. I can tell you that, to your point about continuing to dig, Mr. Zelli continues to dig, and he continues to go to the site uh, on, a, on a routine basis. And the reason he's doing that is because he's made recommendations about um, backup systems, uh, backflow preventers that need to be installed on, on this machine to prevent shutdowns like you just spoke about. So he continues to be up there. He continues to, to go up, continues to monitor the site, continues to talk to other people. And how is that progress being conveyed to you guys? His progress, that? his conversation, his recommendations, if the DEP is following sometimes, his concerns. Sometimes he'll send an email to me, and I'll relay that confidentially into the mayor and council. Um, sometimes he has direct communications with the administration. It depends. Could, could those um, summaries be conveyed to the public so we know what's going on? In some instances, yes, they can. In some instances where I get concerns about how close we get to the litigation, um, and the arguments that are being made by SCP, um, then no, you know, that's why I send them in confidentially under the attorney-client privilege. Um, you know, uh, we were supposed to have depositions. One of the things I was going to update you last week, uh, tonight was we were supposed to have depositions of Mr. and Mrs. Benardi last week, uh, and they were canceled uh, at the last minute. So, you know, the case, the Superior Court case continues to proceed. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think we have to be a little bit careful about just how much information gets disseminated from our experts because eventually those experts are going to be called as witnesses. Do you, do you know the time scale of the hearing for SEP requesting the core sampling? No. We haven't heard any response yet. No. That hasn't been set? That no. date hasn't been set yet? No. And that's in the federal court, I believe. They filed that in the federal district court. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. No, I have my hand up. Yes, ma'am. A whole freaking time. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but I'm tired, and you know I'm tired. I'm Barbara Giacuinto, 14 Mountain Road. I want to speak into you two, to the elephant in the room. Okay, um, I don't know your name, but the guy who always talks, he, I think he left. The only thing that is broke here is our government. That is the problem. The reason that you can't go any higher is because you can't get any higher. I was at the soil conservation meeting with Bob and one of their girl, Mirna, right? Yep. It's a done deal. I'm sorry to tell you, it's already done, okay? If you don't know that, sorry, then you haven't been following the rules. So we know it's done. We know it's because the DEP is hierarchy and you can't get there. And so I am here tonight to just say to everybody, not to you, but to everybody, <coughs> This is a bigger problem in Roxbury. We have a broken government. We can't get there anymore. The gap is getting bigger. That's what we're talking about here. The DEP already won. And if people who clap for Bob Martin because he said safety, look him up. He's the bad guy, okay? I just want to make you clear on some of that stuff. But I, that's all I wanted to say. Now I'm going home. God bless you all. Argue all you want. Hi, Shannon Cacavella, 32 Mountain Road. Um, I just had a couple of comments. Um, Mayor, you said that you were waiting, um, you were talking about the money for the access road, um, and you said it was like 800 million. It should be 800,000, not 
Yeah. Right, did I, if I yeah. said million, I you did. You I said million, but that money. No, I said there was a sh because of the shortfall of eight hundred million. Okay. I, I said, the state is short. Okay. Have a but that time. money was set aside, and I don't remember what meeting it was, but it was told to us by the DEP that that money was put aside to hold out because they were unsure if the access road would be needed. So if you could look into that, but they were they told us, I don't know if anybody else remembers that. I don't remember that. But that what that was told that that money was put aside already and it wasn't to be used. Um, you also I don't remember if it was you or Chris Rats uh, prior to them taking over the site or yeah. no. I think it predated them taking over the site. But they they did mention I'll go back home too and, and look at it. Um now you said that you were talking to the DEP about reimbursing you money for stuff. I've had a monitor in my yard for over a year and nobody's ever come to me to reimburse me for any of the electric that that costs for the monitor. So if you guys are going to get money back, that's no problem. you could just, I mean, I haven't said anything, it doesn't bother me, but if you guys are going to get money back, I don't mind because this is a public out, you know, this is good. Understood. This is the first time you've raised it? Yeah, absolutely. I haven't said anything because, you know, I want to help the community, but if you guys are going to get money back, then you can figure out how much that monitors cost for the last year. Um, uh, Mayor, you had said, uh, Mr. Massey, that spoke before, that you would try or if there was a way that somebody here can contact the DEP to get him a meeting regarding his... Um, to get him a meeting. Yes, to, to get him a meeting. If there's any way that you can get me a meeting with somebody from the DOH, because I'm sick and my kids are sick and I know I sent an email to... To Chris Ratz, I actually got a phone call back from Carrie from the. Um, did you get a phone call from? Uh, the no, I did not. Department. And for the first time, I said um, to the DEP to Carrie today. I spoke with her in great lengths regarding the health, and I said my main concern is not short term; it's long term. And every day the monitor has read two, three, four, seven, eight. I've been breathing this in basically nonstop since it's since you know that November. And for the first time, I could not breathe. And 911 was almost called. I w it was smelled so bad. Came in, windows open, and it, and it was bad. So now I'm extremely worried about how smelling this for over a year, every single day, is going to affect me and, and my kids. Um, and lastly, um, I just wanted to let you know that um, I am part of REACT. I'm, I'm sure you all know. We are thrilled to have Lois Gibbs. I don't know if you're familiar with her from the Love Canal. Um, she is coming to Roxbury on May 21st. Uh, we have her booked for the Senior Center and she is an American activist. She has so many award-winning awards behind her and I wanted to personally invite all of you to come because she is a great inspiration. Do you have a with I do. Amy, we have a picture with you. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll But it would be, yeah, I think, so that's about it. I, I just, you know, again, just wanted to make those points and then just to personally invite you guys because this is a big deal that she's coming and, and to do. I make it a point when I come here to town hall. I'm sorry. Three or four times a week. I don't call Route 46, I call Mountain Road. And I do it specifically to see if there's a smell. And I'm wondering, I'm not disputing what you say, but I don't smell it or haven't smelled it in the last, let's say, two My or three house weeks. Today. Nice afternoon. Nice afternoon. Nice afternoon. Nice afternoon. Nice afternoon. what I'm saying, please? I haven't smelled it in the last couple of weeks except one night when I went by the entrance to the landfill. I was about 10 feet away. I got a little whiff of it. And five feet later, it, it didn't, I didn't smell it. So I'm wondering, why is it that your area? Well, Shannon's in Grand Central. I mean, it's just the way that I'm my just house. Just asking is, a question because I, I, I don't know, but that was my question to Carrie today and to um, an email I sent to Chris Rass. I'm wondering how accurate the monitors are because the way that wave came through in the last 48 hours, I'm sorry, it was. I mean, for my this is just my experience from living with this for a very long time. It was more than eight parts per billion. And I, back, I would bet my, my children's life on it that it was way up there. And I, fe I feel that those monitors were not as accurate. And I'm home a lot of times when the company comes out to calibrate them. I know they come out. I do that. But I, I'm telling you, I, I could swear to God 
that those monitors, for me to cause, to have that effect last night and have to close all my windows, and you know, it's May 13th. Well, I have to put my air on because the smell is so bad. So I'm not saying coming up the mountain, but it's bad in the back. Feel free to step well, on my property I go up anytime and, and go go behind the houses. Because I typically, <clears throat> most of the, other than last summer, or when it was really bad up there, you know, I'd go by and I smell it, it was bad. But in the last couple of weeks, and continually, I go up and down that mountain, and only because I want to see if there's Right, but you feel free to pull into my house and go into the backyard, and it's just to catch a whiff. But there were a few times last week, um, not the last week, the week before, that it smelled very early in the morning, which is about what happened last year, because the kids standing, my son and my neighbor standing and waiting for the bus on a day of New Jersey ass, the smell was so bad that my son actually walked back in the house and said, I, I, I can't stand out there. No, I'm not just feeling what you're saying. No, I absolutely. Why I'm not smelling it. <laughs> But feel free, if you check out those monitors and they smell, you, door can, one of these days. you can just Thank knock you. on the door. Thank Jim, you. Thank you, in, in, in regards to today's smell, if we weren't here earlier, this afternoon they shut the system down to bring in that other that other pipe, and there was there were some admissions at that time. Well, Carrie said she was going to look into yesterday's, because it was yesterday's. Yeah, that I'm was, just, I right. know some people said they smelled it today. today. I just wanted to point Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay. Well, and you actually told me you saw them dig up. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yesterday. Yes, 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 of a group called Citizens for Clean Pump and Lakes. I recommend that you do go see Lois Gibbs. Um, Lois has been to Pump and Lakes. She was nominated multiple times for the Nobel Peace Prize. She's a Goldman Prize uh, winner, and she's the winner of the Environmental uh, Heinz Award. Uh, the reason why Superfund exists today is because of Ms. Gibbs and her fight for Love Canal. She was able to get 950 families bought out of Love Canal by President Jimmy Carter. And the reason why I'm going into Love Canal is because you need to know that a lot of that was capped. And in 2011, it is now known to be recontaminated. Living in Pompton Lakes, I live in the highly, you've probably seen the news, the DuPont contamination. 30 years, uh, we have about 128 wells, core test wells, they go down, they test. If Mr. Menderos said what is true, groundwater, contaminated groundwater is death. And it's been the death of 500 families in my neighborhood, which is a third of the community. Attorney Bucco, you and I have met in the past, and I think you're familiar with Pompton Lakes. So um, you know what I'm talking about and what we're doing. Um, NJDEP, <laughs> a joke. We're, we're under RECRA. We're under RECRA, which is the Resource Recovery Act. We're fighting like hell to get super fun. EPA has gotten more involved with us because we, the residents, went to our congressmen, went to our federal senators, Senator Lautenberg, um, rest in peace, Senator Menendez, Congressman Pascrell. These people helped us get the EPA more involved. I'm telling you that capping may not be the answer and you need to get the evidence. You need to know everything that you've been exposed to because you can't remediate correctly unless you know. Yeah. 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 So, I ask you now, save your children of the future. That's what I'm fighting for. I gave my, up my political career to fight and to volunteer my time for six years now. And I may have good news to announce soon. From my end, I dedicated my life to this. 
save these people, save their children, save their grandchildren's children. Get a lawyer. Go up against the NJDEP. There's really good lawyers out of Jersey City. The city of Jersey City went up against Honeywell and won. They won. Look it up. Jersey City versus Honeywell. You can win this. Go against the state. Do it. Do it for them. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kathy Hart. I live at 12 Summit Lane in Sagasana. I'd like to give you my perspective on Fenmore and why I believe that trucking it out is the only option. I am someone who grew up in Compton Lakes, so I thank Lisa very much for coming thank you. here and supporting me. It's a beautiful little town. It was a very tight-knit community. It was a great place to grow up in until it got contaminated by the DuPont chemical plant. Unfortunately, um, after the contamination, residents started getting sick. That's what we noticed first. Now, my community, the street that I grew up on, I knew all my neighbors. And in my mind, to this day, I can visualize each house. And there are very few houses on the block that I grew up on where at least one family member hadn't had some form of cancer. My own father died from pancreatic cancer. So I know that this idea of capping is not going to work. It's just postponing an inevitable disaster. My brother happened to be the mayor of Plumpton Lakes in 1987, and he discovered documents locked in a file cabinet in the borough hall. And it showed that the state DEP and DuPont had been discussing the contamination of groundwater by solvents, by toxic solvents, for several years the extent of which they never shared with the residents. So I have zero trust in the DEP. I, I believe they know a lot more than they're telling us. And we need to find out what they know. At that point, he was able to get the first public hearings about the contamination. Outraged borough officials and residents pressured the New Jersey DEP to broaden the scope of testing which helped uncover evidence that the pollution had spread much farther than had been previously been released into nearby neighborhoods and poisoned wells, contaminated yards, and threatened the health of residents. The similarities between Pompton Lakes and Roxbury are startling and disturbing. For me, I think of the Yogi Bear saying it's deja vu all over again. To see another community faced with an environmental disaster that the DEP, in our instance, caused and now refuses to help us and do the right thing and clean it up and get it out of here. So I believe that it's your duty as our elected officials to stand up to them and to protect this community that we are all fighting to protect and that we all love. I therefore request that you take the following actions. Take whatever steps are necessary to get the soil samples. Don't simply just accept that you lost the first round and roll over and let them do whatever they want. There's, I believe they know what's there, and I believe that's why they're fighting us so hard to keep us from finding it out. And when somebody fights you to get information, you have to believe that that's not something that is good news for them or that's beneficial for them. The second thing I would like to do is I would like to see you send letters to every household mm -hmm. in the town informing the residents about the dangers that we're facing with this landfill. I have talked to a lot of members of my friends and people I know in the community, and most people have said to me, well, if it was that big of a deal, you know, the mayor or the council would be informing us. They'd be out there. They would see more from you, and they see nothing from you. They see it from the citizens, but not from you. We know that the debris that was dumped here is in violation of the DEP's own regulations, and it's causing the, the um, toxic hydrogen sulfide gas infiltrating our community. That's my last page. Okay. 
I'm asking you to fight the DEP until all of this is trucked out of here. As a result of what happened to my hometown of Compton Lakes, I've become an environmentalist. And there is a Native American ide um, ecological concept called seven, ge seven generation sustainability. It encourages current generations of humans to live sustainably and work for the benefit of the seventh generation in the future. I'm asking all of you not to be short-sighted. Burying this will only result in much greater harm in the future, in the years to come. I'm asking you to think of the children of this community. Walk down at, on Sunday, I was at Horseshoe Lake with my grandson. With all the children playing down there, I mean, walk down there. These are the people that you're burying this. These are the people that are gonna affect, and I don't know how, honestly, how that doesn't weigh on your conscience. Walk through the schools, look at these kids. This is, this is a serious concern. So I ask you to do that in the name of the community. Think of the children of the community. This is your legacy to the town. Your names are on this, whether you, you know, want it or not. This is what you do or what you fail to do is your legacy to this town. I ask you to stop being good soldiers for Governor Christie in the New Jersey DEP and be the generals we need to lead this fight. The future health and safety of this community demands no less. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just one quick question. Yes. What was the nature of the contamination of bunker lakes? It was like the DuPont chemical plant. There were um, solvents, toxic solvents, that they dumped into the land and okay. into the streams. I, I didn't hear about that. All right, thank you. Yeah. It's been, and that has been going on for two generations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I think uh, I've got a little something to say. You, you find something funny here? No, I was not. Then pay attention. I always pay attention. Please, please, try please, to act please, like you are. Please, please, please. Yeah. Okay. Now, I told you, if you got it on your files, what this young lady just said, see, they've been listening real good. What this young lady just said about notifying every resident in Roxbury, remember about a year and a half ago, I said write every resident letters? A year and a half later, you haven't done it yet. Why? Actually, we have. No, I never got that. I never got that. You know, what'd you do? Go buy my house? And everybody I talked to on my street never got one. Well, did you forget Main Street? No, we, we did send one back in, I believe it was. Uh, no, you didn't. Oh I have it right here, September 6, 2013. You, you, got, you got my address in there? Uh, the name of the people? It says, Dear Resident. That's how we would do it under a Well, dear resident, you got to have my address. Did you put it on a computer or did you send it on? No, we would have gone with it. It would have gone under bulk mail into the post office. Never got okay. one. Uh, this is the one. This is the one. The notification system is also because yes, residents want us to specifically state that the in regards to the landfill. This talks about the landfill and signing up to the townships. Um, alert notification system so that you could get all the information on the landfill. And that was sent out a year and a half ago. September 6, 2013. I never got an alert either. You, you forgot my address evidently. It's 243 Main Street. Do you ever do it again? Please send me one. I did. If you Thank you. We apologize. Oh my God. Well, that's about all I got to say. Is, you know, I know you never had the school involved because you said you have no district over the schools. But I still feel that all the little children would have sent letters to Washington, D.C., Mr. Bucco. Something may have happened, but we'll never know because you didn't do it. Why? Thousands of letters a month. Why? It might help. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to screw anybody here. I'm going to say, glad to call by the horn. If you want to go to Washington, I'll go with you. I'm not afraid to speak to them. I'll go. I'll go with you. I'll be the first one in the car. If you want to go, just let me know. I'm, I'm with you. We're tired of fighting you guys. Fight for us. Everything we say, you come back with a reply. Well, we're tired of hearing that. That's right. You want to go? I'll go with you. When you want to go? When anybody you want to go, I'll go. Mr. Bucco, I'll go with you. When you want to go? I bet you half of the people here will go with us. Yeah, well, it ain't going to do you no good to shake your head. Let's make a date. Do you have any other points you would like to bring up? So, in other words, shut up and get away. No. I, well, yeah, I should no. Have more points. 
That's about it. Well, I tell you what, if it was the 1800s, all you gentlemen were tarred and feathered and ran out. Yes, that's it. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Sorry, Melissa, I didn't realize what you did with the hat on. Melissa Dadgerson, 6 Justine, please. Um, I just have some questions. Going back to an email that I sent to Jim on April 30th, I was just wondering how the monitors, um, how was it decided where they go? Because I, I respectfully requested that on the agenda tonight, a public discussion be held about a monitor getting closer to Horseshoe Lake. And I was just wondering how the monitors, how and was that decision did made? Did we not respond to you on that? Yeah, no. I, 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 well, I'll go back and confirm. We did respond to some residents to that oh, question. If you did get responded to, I apologize, but it was, it was actually based upon um, our professional as well as the residents. Residents had actually a, a lot of input, and what we tried to do is get everything that was coming down and where it was concentrating. So we would pick it up before it got to anywhere else. I mean, because I'm a resident within five miles, and you, you all have my medical doc documentation of my problem, and I'm a resident that is tonight requesting that a monitor be put in the Horseshoe Lake area? Well, a couple of things. Um, we've gotten these requests before. And the monitors, there, there's two perimeters on the model, monitor, depending upon initial complaints, as, as the mayor said, from residents. The initial monitor was at Emmons Road Field. It was, you gotta remember, this was established at the time because the Fields. It was established in order to provide for whether we should alert residents about the use of them and the road field. We then expanded that as a perimeter all the way around the landfill, except for the one side because we just don't get the winds don't prevail that way. We then put the we then put monitors working with the schools in advance of the schools, and that would serve for Horseshoe Lake as well too. We don't get odor complaints at a horseshoe lake. We didn't get a lot of odor you get them from Jeff, You get them from Eisenhower School Middle School, yeah. not, recently. Not, not recently. That is adjacent. I and drive past, excuse me, Chris, yeah. every single morning. And I want to talk about another thing, is the anxiety that I feel for all the people walking there. Every single morning, I feel anxious going to work, wondering about these kids, these residents, do they really know what's going on? I felt anxious driving to my own neighborhood, coming here tonight watching these children, toddlers with their parents, do each and every of the 9,000 residents know of the health effects that I've been asking for the DOH health fact sheet, going on to a different topic, but connected to the health and the monitors, to be mailed to all of the residents of Roxbury Township. We're a community. This poison does not discriminate. Shannon Cacavella, yeah, I hear her loud and clear. The poor woman and her kids breathe it in day in and day out. My sister smelled it this morning. She's a half a mile away. It doesn't discriminate. It travels. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. It, it may, and, and I'm not an expert on this. We do have some people who are coming in who are more familiar with this than anybody in the room. So I can't wait till they come in. This is what they do do, and they should be here in the next few weeks. But it does dissipate as it travels, and you do have the, the, the levels as to where it becomes health concerns. Right, but if my whole point is if you if you let all 9,000 residents know, there may be more people that may be connecting dot A to bot, dot B to dot C to dot D. It's about learning the community. We're together in this fight. And quite honestly, it's us against you. That's how I feel with this whole situation. It's us against you. Us having to do all this work. Us having to come here. Because if I want a letter to go out to the 9,000 residents, and then let's see how many more people you get here. How much strength in numbers? I would think that you would want strength in numbers on your side. So I'd like for you to revisit a, a monitor by Horseshoe Lake. I don't. I think if we're advised to do that, then then that's we'll take that under advisement. I think that's what we respond. Okay. okay. Uh, my other, that's still on the health topic, uh, I want to know exactly how much this proposal is uh, that's expensive for them to do a health survey. You there, said there was a proposal. There's I two separate phases. Both mm -hmm. phases combined are $80,000. Okay. 
$80,000. I, I speak it for myself, and I want to say the people behind me. More than willing to pay for it. I am. Yeah, there's no price tag on health, mental or physical. But as you said, as you said, Did you you said that this emanates and it goes to other areas in Roxbury Township. Well, no, if it, it doesn't stop at the borders. Stop. I did not say that. I said but, Roxbury but, but, Township. It travels. But my point, yeah, but there are other areas closer to the Fenimore landfill outside of Rock with outside. Good. Then reach so out that's, to the, that's why we went to the county. Okay, that's why yeah. we've gone to the county because we believe it's a county. Right, and thank you for bringing that up. I think okay. I would think that the county would be for free. That's, that's and I've been asking it. this going on the record since, since October. October. Yeah, Chris, you remember. So yeah. I'm just baffled. I don't understand why it takes, you know, you getting this eighty thousand dollar for two parts of the proposal and then now you're suggesting a well, Mark Caputo who's gonna to go to the county health. Do it from the well, beginning. Can, can I mention something else to you? Their proposal, mm -hmm. when you do a statistical analysis and you do a survey, you don't necessarily ask every resident in town. That's what you, you don't do that. You go out, you go out to a radius around the facility and then you have another group outside of the facility and you monitor the health effects. All right, what's so, the other group outside the mile radius? Because I want to know, because I live within five miles. I think, I don't know right offhand, but... Um, when will you know? Well, I'll know when I go back and look at it, but I believe it's 100 within a mile and 50 outside of a mile. And they're going to be asking them to monitor it on a regular basis. So it's not just a one-time survey. So this just, is how you do a statistically accurate survey. So it's not a blank mailing to every resident in town prescribing what the issue is and have you felt these effects? Why not? There's because, some gases that we don't know because we didn't fight hard enough to get the core sampling that are not, that don't smell. Because that's not necessarily a, a specifically accurate. Some effect. of the gases don't smell well. So how do you know? That's what some of the concern is, is that it's not going to fully address your, your, your concerns. No, I think if you, it would address my concerns. If you sent something out to 9,000 residents, but that's not a survey. No, I know. Okay. Two separate issues. One, I'd like a survey out to the 9,000 residents. But they don't do, that's, that's my point, they don't do that. That's not what they do in a statistically accurate health Okay, survey. Rich, they don't do it, then let's get the core samples so they will do it. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't believe it, and the reason I don't believe it is because this, I knew this way back when, and I didn't have a crystal ball to tell me this. It's a process, it's a process, it's a process. You agreed with capping it. You made that decision via emails and, I don't know, some phone calls that went back and forth. You didn't even listen to the public that evening. It's a disgrace that our stakeholders, that stakeholders here that pay the taxes, you didn't take into account our input into it. You've had your minds made up all along. The only one, Fred Hall, and he's not here tonight. He's the only one that seems to once in a while disagree with the council members. Um, so it's your, your minds have been made up. Jim, you speak with, because I'm the one that's been wanting it, so Governor Christie, who's the big boss, of the garden state that we live in i want I, you, you talk with uh commissioner martin and the chief of staff my relationship as far as trust with this town council zero none that means nothing to me i don't know if it ever happened there's nothing in writing to back it up if you want to make if you want to get things known in public like pompton lakes you don't want to end up like pompton lakes why aren't you calling a, a, a press conference and Dan Massey, why don't you bring up his report? Why don't you put some things out? Shed some light. I don't really understand what everybody's afraid of. I don't. Well, I don't. Does your, do you have an answer for that? What a shock. You know, you, you want to consider calling a press conference and doing stuff that would instill more confidence in the community that pays your salary? You've made up your mind on what you think we've done. You said you don't trust us. We've done a lot and you don't speak for the entire municipality. It gets tough to sit up here sometimes and take it, but you know something, you guys will go back and face FaceTime on the Facebook on that. Well, I don't have a Facebook well, account, so. Members will, <laughs> members will. I've never seen it, but That's I prerogative. Know. But then, so be it, it is what it is. But, you know, your thoughts are not necessarily those of every single person in this municipality. It's the thought. They don't, they don't know. Know. That's the whole point. If the 9,000 residents knew, had more information, the truth? More the majority, a significant majority of the population knows about it. Really? Where's your study? You have a study statistics to back that up? 
I'm, Tim, I'm asking you questions. I'm data. You're data driven. So where's your data to say the majority of the 9,000 residents? It's based on the same assumptions you have. Uh, there you go. They don't yeah. know. Okay. But it's 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 conversations with people. Uh, Mr. Barons was at the senior club uh, a couple of weeks ago. I polled <coughs> poll both senior clubs as to their knowledge of the Fenimore issue. And there are about 200 and some odd members of the uh, of the senior clubs. And uh, I spoke with uh, 140 of them. 140 percent of those seniors are aware of the landfill issue. 48.8 percent reside in Sacasano. 25.4 percent in Ledgewood. 8.8 percent .8 in Kenville. 9.5 in Landing. 2.4 in Flanders. 2.7 in Lower Berkshire Valley. And 2.4 in Mount Arlington. So yes, people all over this township. What do they know, Gary? What did you share with them? I want to know what they what they know. Like, what did you share the department? Like, what did information did you give them? Okay. We give them an update on what is going on in landfill, what's happened, and that's what we give them an update on. I don't have a prepared speech. Okay. But that's what we do. And Mr. Zojak will confirm it. We do this every single week. We even lead off. Our, we give the seniors an update on what's going around in town. And number one, we start with the pen. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is every part of town has heard of the landfill. I'm not saying all the residents, but 140 is a pretty good representation. Really? Out of 9,000? That's in one age group. You're not getting a good sample of all the age groups. I, I'm just, and that's great that you're updating, you're filling in the seniors. I have no idea what you tell the seniors, whether it's being capped and the problems. A lot of them you know I, mean? I don't know. I'd have to come. A lot of them ask us questions, and we answer those questions. And some of them get their information on a website. Okay. We've been seniors. I still think it's a big difference between 9,000 What's the median age in Roxbury? Uh -huh. Get that sample. 23,000 residents in Roxbury. What's the median age? It's 9,000 residents in Roxbury. Right? Of course they know. They're in it. It's 23,000. Yeah, so 20, yeah, and about 23,000 residents. Right. So 140 out of the, I just don't think, I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but I think that's a very small percentage of residents. It doesn't matter what the percentage is. Gary, yes, it does. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Gary, Jim, it, it matters to me. It matters to me that the entire community knows what's going on, 9,000 residents. So if you're choosing not to do that, then you're choosing not to do that. If you're choosing not to have a press release, and, 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 and talk about, uh, you know, the misinformation that's going out there and letting everybody know and, and getting, building the faith and building the trust. It's your choice. Lucifer, 12 Book Out Drive. Of course, I agree with uh, what we've just said. I've been asking for the same thing for quite a while, that all of the residents of Roxbury Township get a letter stating exactly what's going on with the Fenimore Landfill. Not that they've heard of the Fenimore Landfill. Everyone who's lived here for 70 years or 30 years or they know that there's a Fenimore landfill. I didn't know when I moved here because it was very well covered up. But all the same, they should know. Yeah, literally, yeah. with trees yeah. and, you know, it just looked like a regular old forest. Very pleasant, very nice. So, Gary, I don't know what your... What do the people at the Senior Center say that they know about Fenimore landfill? The ones from Sakasana and Landing. And you guys have a discussion. You don't have a discussion with them? 
You said you asked them. I asked them if they heard about the landfill. That's the end of the conversation. Okay? That's the end of their the conversation. The purpose of my comment was to let you know that there is a large, every part of this town there have heard about the landfill. Okay? You people have been arguing that nobody knows about it other than... No, we're not saying nobody knows there's a venomous landfill. We're not saying that no one knows about the Fenimore landfill, period. We're saying that nobody knows the detail that all 23,000 residents of this township are entitled to know everything there is to know about that landfill. Perhaps not from the council meetings. Mm -hmm. Not the place, well, Mr. Really? I'm a really? senior. That's close-minded. Really so I'll go there to the... What day do you go there to discuss? Thursday? Okay, I'll be there Thursday, and I'll ask them what they know about the Fenimore landfill in the past two years, not going back for ever. Anyway, today I was looking at some old documents, and I ran across a... Uh, Something that Bill Kibler from the Raritan Headwaters Association testified to in Trenton last year, just about this time. He talked about the 470 square mile watershed that includes parts of Somerset, Morris, Hunterton, and the three largest reservoirs in the state of New Jersey, and includes the north and south branches of the Raritan River. And unfortunately, he said, it includes the Fenmore dump. The Raritan Headwaters Association has been conducting stream monitoring in our watershed for 24 years now. We have a total of 57 monitoring sites. Last year, we added a monitoring site approximately 200 to 300 yards downstream of the Fenmore dump, upstream of Ledgewood Park, because we were concerned about the impact the dump, dump was having on surface water. We use a DEP and EPA approved protocol which measures biologic conditions in the stream and results in something called the New Jersey Impairment Score. The ideal score, the maximum score is 30. The minimum score is zero. In a headwaters area in the highlands, in my watershed, I would expect to see scores very close to 30. Last year, this site, just downstream of the Fenimore dump, scored 18, which in New Jersey impairment score terms means it is moderately impaired. The term moderately impaired may not scare you because this doesn't sound all that terrible. I'd like to give you some context. If you look at the map, we don't have the map. Of the 57 sites that we monitor, last year there was one site that got a lower score than Fenimore dump one site. There is a site that we monitor every year and have been monitoring for 20 years, 200 yards downstream of the Clinton Township wastewater treatment plant that has never gotten a score as low as the one Ledgewood Brook got this year. So we are deeply concerned about the impact of this dump on surface water quality. Now you may ask yourself, and the public may ask, why do I care about little tiny Ledgewood Brook way up there in Roxbury? Well, it's because you are drinking that water. Senator Bateman, so are you, as are most of your constituents. Ledgewood Brook eventually drains into the south branch of the Raritan River, which collects water from a couple of different places. And what number was that? Well, their concern is that it's going all over a certain part of the region, taking in all kinds of people's drinking water, not just Roxbury, not just Morris County, not just Somerset, but I can't find the page, but you get my drift. We are poisoning the whole area not just Roxbury. So you have an obligation, in my opinion, to start fighting this, 
all the press conferences, get off of Governor Christie's payroll. He's not going to be president. He's going nowhere after this. You have no future with him. He's finished. <laughs> We're still here, and we want you There's to work here for on his us. Payroll, by the way. <laughs> all right, the pat on the head payroll, which is all you seem to require. Add a boy. Thank you very much. We can say add a boy to you also. You haven't heard that before. So, thanks. Thank you, Maureen. Before you leave, let me address a few of those items. Oh, okay. Thank you, too. All right. The stream sampling has been done by the Rockbury Environmental Commission for the past eight or nine years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. All right. Last year was out of norm. All right. Out of um, norm? Out of norm. Okay. In what they test for macro. Listen to me for a second. They, they test for macro invertebrate, which is bacteria and all that other nonsense. All right, we ran this by the health department, and the health department went out, took a look at the thing, they did an additional water test. There are no VOCs in that water. What they're thinking happened, a dead animal was upstream. That's what they think happened. All right, we are, listen to me, we are testing again this year. All right, one year out of seven or eight, that's an anomaly. We're gonna test again this year. If it's high again, then we have to really look. But we'll see what happens when they test it again. They wait a whole year? Well, this was the year before. Yeah. I don't know what it was. This was not 2013, I'm very well aware of what it was. Okay. So we have the result from 2012, 2013. Now you're going to do it when? In 2014? I think it's next month. Next month? Maureen, those tests do not test for any contaminants. I want everybody to know that. They test for no contaminants. With whose test? The tests that you're quoting there, they do not test for contaminants. What we do, the township does, and what we continue to do, and we just got the latest results back at the end of 1st of May, we test the streams, we test the water for known contaminants based on, based on the state of NJDP's drinking water standards. Every single test that we've done comes back within those standards. All of the tests that we've done on private wells have come back within those standards. The test that they do simply looks at small, little animals in the water, microvertebrates. Can't say why the condition may be there. They can't trace it back to any known point, any known element, any known location. That's why we do the acceptable drinking water standards. All of those test results are on the website. I've offered it every single meeting, and I continue to offer it. You want your well test? We'll come in and test it. Why do all the people have to have new wells, Doug? I'm sorry to speak out of turn, Joanne Longo, 7 Pleasant Hill Road. Two, I, understand, I understand two new wells have been done. Okay. And, and one out of, out of a location that has hundreds of wells. And one was because the, the water the water at 30 foot well dried up. That happens after 30 years. I don't know about the second one that you speak of, but I did know that the two was, I don't know the reasons for the second one. There's a but there have not been being dug uh, this week right now. Yeah, and you can, and, and in addition to that, our wells, people have asked me, our wells are in a separate, complete aquifer to, the, to, to anything in the Fenimore Basin area. Then we get 50% of our water on a regular basis from the MUA. We test our water continuously, the town's drinking water, to ensure that it's safe. So when you bring up a report like that, you have to know what was the basis of the report. We do the true standard, which is the drinking water standard. Okay. And we test our streams to the drinking water standard. Okay. Are you going to do any additional testing on the water, considering I'll, I'll, that I'll, it has... It's, Yes, of Coming course. From the land There's no water. We will be glad. We just did the basin again. It came back with the drinking water standards. You want us to do a stream, we'll do a stream. Okay. Okay? We'll continue to do that. We're not ignoring it, Maureen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh Joanne Longo, Seven Pleasant Hill Road. I just wonder, like, is there a way to harness this gas and make like you know, make some money out of it. Brooke, if we don't have any more money to, uh, you know, 
to, there's to a way to make money. Thing, thing, that's probably those we're out well, no, money. actually, interesting that you're from Pleasant Hill Road because a resident of yours came in and met with me last week. And, and what he indicated was that, and he had heard in other areas, they rather than bringing and creating a caustic effluent, they actually bring it down to a sulfur powder base and they sell that sulfur powder base. And right now, depending on who you believe and why they're doing that basis of that report at that particular time, the sulfide levels are not at a, at a level that they could do that at. But in so fact, Warren County did do that for a short period, or did that for a period of time. Isn't that where we, if we would say we truck it out, we would truck it out to Warren County where it would be? Well, what you would truck out. I think a lot of people don't understand. Truck it out. They're like, truck it out, put it somewhere else. You're going to dump it on somebody else. They don't get well, that. Well, based on this scenario, you would take it, you would process it, and you would end up with a, a, a sulfur powder versus a, a caustic, but it would still go through a similar system. Okay. Is there a uh, sewer plant in the plans in the works for or a water treatment or anything for that area like down below? Your, that sewer in that area goes to one or two locations depending on your, if you're on the crest of the hill or the bottom of the hill. It either goes to our uh, Ajax treatment plant and there's, a, there's a, in a line down Mount Road or it goes to the Muskinecom sewer authority, depending on where your location is. How about new plants? For a... There wouldn't be, there wouldn't, one, I doubt we'd get a permit for a new plant in this day, and we don't really, we have capacity at the Muskinecom sewer authority. No. There's no need. The answer's no. So, no. Would that be an idea to maybe the runoff for the stuff? Would that be an idea? Well, I, I don't think it'd be sufficient to fund a, a complete plant. So. Yeah, the plants are very expensive. Would that be coming from federal money anyway? I mean, there's no, all our sewer stuff going to now Byram. Am I correct with that? Say that again. Is all our sewage coming going to Byram? Anyway? No, no, no. We, oh. yeah. Two plants: one in town, down in Sacasona, and one in uh, Mount Olive, which is the Musconetcom Sewer Authority. But none of this effluent is going into that. Anybody else oh, just one more thing. Yes. Is there any way to call the U.S. Attorney's Office? Did you guys ever do that? To call the U.S. Attorney's Office just to no, we've for contacted the EPA and, and other federal authorities, but no, not the. Uh, I mean, all, all the indiscrepancies and, and you know, you feel like you've been lied to and everything else. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure the attorney can speak to that, but you know. Maybe that's some place else to go to. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Yes. But he didn't speak to it. In order to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office, there needs to be a, a violation of law somewhere. <laughs> criminal, there's no violation of law here. There's a no criminal violation of law. Oh, excuse me. I'm there's, sorry. There's, <laughs> there's no violation of laws. Are you? There's no. I'm not aware of any criminal violation of the law. There's no occurred. criminal violations. No. There was no liner put on the thing before they dumped. The DEP put no liner down. But they let it Since the 1980s, you had to put a liner down before you could dump. That's a violation. It's a convicted felon. That's not a violation. It's not a criminal violation. It's not a criminal violation. And it's, and it's an environmental violation. But you need the U.S. Attorney's Office deals in criminal violations. There's no, there's no laws on the books for environmental. Well, I'm sorry. I, I guess I. I'm very I'm Nancy Venturini and I live on 31 Vail Road. And first of all, I want to thank all you men for being in your jobs and helping our community. You have a lot of negatives. And I finally met the mayor. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm a senior citizen and my taxes are way too high. And I know it is for everybody, but we're on fixed incomes and like $500 or $1,000 should be enough taxes for the year. Because there's companies that could face some of these taxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't mind helping the kids in school. I don't have any at school or anything. But it's just that it's very tough on us and to pay our other bills. So if there's some way you could maybe help us out, 
I appreciate We'd all appreciate it. But I still want to thank you for doing your jobs. And, thank you. Know. And I can tell you that we, we, try, we try to be very fiscally responsible. Uh, the municipalities, a small percentage of your overall tax bill, obviously about 70%. Uh, or just close to 70% goes to schools, which we have no control over. Um, we do have an increase this year. Um, last year we did not, but on average over the last uh, 15 years or so, we've tried our best to keep down by consolidating services, uh, sh sharing services, privatizing, uh, trying to do as much as we can, because we do understand the, the fixed income aspect. Um, and are you a member of any of the senior clubs? Uh, yeah, I belong to the senior citizens. Okay, okay. I know that they have some programs there as well. Chris, would you want to? I just want to make sure that you're getting your tax freeze and you. No, I tried to do that, but they never had the paperwork. I could have frozen that five hundred dollars. Now I'm up to. Well, well, here, come here and give me your phone number, please. And you, Mr. Rass, will give you a call on that. And I'll give you. I'll reach out to you because there are programs, as you know, that freeze. Just make sure she knows about the tax freeze. That's what she needs to know. Well, she said something about five hundred dollars. Yeah, we will. We'll go through and we'll make sure that you're getting all the tax. That you can get. Mr. Rass will call you or have the right person call you. If not, give us a call. Our phone numbers are in the uh, calendar. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Did you have anything else or can I move on? Let me make sure I got that. Oh. Okay. I just want to make a statement that I get something about the order on the paperwork saying that how the quality of the order. So he was right when he said that. So we 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 publish that every year. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a call. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else in the public question here? Uh, that's the first time we we have a second public session for follow-ups. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Helen Martins and I'm from Pompton Lakes. I came here tonight in support of the people of Roxbury because I heard of their fight. And as a resident who pays taxes in a town that is polluted, and a council that doesn't agree with us much at all, I just sympathize with these people because I know what a fight it is. I am a cancer survivor. I can't prove it came from there. I can't prove it didn't. And you don't understand the frustration that we feel when we present things to you and you say your hands are tied, we're doing our best, the reports are here. It's, it's not good enough because you know why? We pay a lot of taxes. And we look for the support of our federal government, and you know, we feel like everybody shortchanges us. We're shortchanged. Nobody wants to know what's going on. It's just cover it up, make it go away. It didn't ever happen. It didn't happen. It isn't any of their fault, nor mine. The companies or whoever failed needs to step up to the plate. The DEP has failed us. We know they failed us. They knew we ranked high on the hazardous ranking system way back in 207, and we didn't find out for seven years later, or, or even longer. So we know how the DEP, DEP works. No, that was 82, Helen. 82? And that was the EPA. That was the ranking for Superfund. You're getting confused. No, wasn't no. it for vapor intrusion? <laughs> they, they knew about our vapor intrusion contamination in 1988. The public was not told until 2008. Okay, I'm sorry. But anyhow, it's a fight for us. And I know you are doing your job, but you got to be on this end. When your lives are at stake, your home is at stake, and you feel like nobody's listening. And that's just how it feels. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? See, now we're going to close the public portion. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I didn't see that though. Oh, okay. Last one after this, we have to take care of some other items that we have here and then we'll have another public session uh, 
later on. Bob Schultz, uh, 42 Mapledale Avenue. Um, we were talking, Maureen was talking about the water testing that, that uh, the Raritan headwaters did. And it's actually been two years now that they scored an 18, not just one. So just to, to make that point, it's not just been one. It was 2012 and 2013. I'm not aware of 2012, Bob. But yeah. It was the second year in a row that they, it didn't go up, it didn't go down, it just kind of stayed the same. So unless there was the same dead animal in that stream, <laughs> for two years, it's like it stayed the same, and there's only really one source of that. Um, the water testing is but, done. But, but that, that report was just for pumps, correct? Excuse me? That was vertebrae, it wasn't chemicals or anything like that. That's correct, I was just going to go into that. That, that is just macro and vertebrae, there's no chemical testing done. And chemical testing is a moment in time. If you take that sample right now, it can be different if you take it now completely different. A macro and vertebrae testing is a better indicator of the stream health and what is around that stream because it shows the life in the stream at a very small and minute level. So I just wanted to, to clarify that. Well, Bob, if I may, a better test is, is sediment test. And we've done that as well. And they've come back within, within the acceptable limits. Right, but the VOCs, the problem with the VOCs is they evaporate pretty quickly. Yes, but we know when you talk about a moment of time, instead of a chest, it's giving you a history of the event. Right, and so it's a macro and vertebrae as well. Depending on what the causation is. Right. Um, did you guys know about Nature's Choice accepting sanding material? No. Because I just happened upon the article on Google. It happened um, just the other day. And I was very surprised to find out that they had a contract with Bernardsville. Um, and the material went in there from Renardsville into Nature's Choice, which was hurricane sanding material. Oh, we don't know that to be that, but can you No, I mean, in fact, I got an email, that, I got an email this week, over the weekend, I saw that same Bernardsville article. Did you follow up with them? Because it didn't mention anything about Nature's Choice. Uh, I got an email this weekend, it just said right. that they were understanding there was a staging area. It's actually, it was in their minutes. We, I, then we went a little further today. I didn't know. And went into their minutes and said they had a, a choice with Nature's Choice. So I was just wondering if you had... They, they have multiple sites. Was it in Roxbury? Yeah. Well, they do accept debris. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if any of that debris went, came up to Benmore, though. So, because they had soil there, they have materials that can be ground oh. down and can be brought up there as well. So, just a little research we did. Um, we were talking about the monitors before and, and the fact that we want one like near Horseshoe Lake. And the way the monitors were set up was based on no stack, no incinerator up there, no superheated gas. It was just coming out with nothing basically on top and just kind of rolling down the hill and fo following the lay of the land. For the H. And the wind. And for H2S. H2S and everything else that was going on up there. Um, but now we have this incinerator up there, which is 30 feet tall. It's heated to 1,600 degrees, and stuff comes out of it, obviously, and it's superheated. So when something's superheated, it rises, and then eventually cools off and falls down. So what we think, as residents, is that the gases are going further away and bypassing those monitors at the bottom of the mountain. Because we're smelling it in all different places um, where the monitors are not picking up those levels anymore. And we also have noticed that since um, Jefferson, the Jefferson incident when schools um, had all those high readings that day, um, monitors haven't alerted at all. And we wonder if the calibration uh, should be checking with monitors. They check, they check, they check. It's just a coincidence then, because there's been nothing they, they since went, that day. They went out and they checked it. They checked. After we didn't get, they didn't get, they, we did, they did not get complaints from the Jefferson area that day. That day. That day. Have you guys talked to the legislator, legislature at all, to any of, uh, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, about going through an investigation of the DEP? An investigation of the DEP? No. Yeah. I have not enough any other numbers. I doubt any of them. It's not. I guess so. Is there any reason why? Because we know they've lied to us. Uh, it's been lack of transparency. They haven't shared the information. They've given that false information, as Mr. Massey has proved. 
Um, is there any reason why we haven't done that? Well, a lot of things transpired over the last year or two. Yeah, there has been some uh, misinformation uh, on the positive side that he took over the site. We stopped Mr. Bernardi from continuing what he was doing, which was creating a mess in the first place. Right. So um, while there are issues, uh, I haven't seen anything, as Mr. Ruko put it, that would be criminal in nature. Um, at least from, from our perspective and DEP's perspective, from Bernardi's perspective, that's a different story, and we can't get into that because we're in litigation. No, I'm not worried about Mr. Bernardi. I'm actually talking just about the, the NJDEP and, and Governor Christie because both of them were allowing this whole project to happen back in 2010. And they let a convicted felon come in. I mean, we know a lot of the history here, and I'm just wondering why you, as our counsel, have not called for an investigation of the DEP, or even even talked to any of us. Have any other points, Bob? I'll take your silence as uh, you'll take it any way you wish. Very well. Chris, you said there was testing done in May. Early May and at the basin? It was in April. It was April at the basin. And, and so that that's just been, been, Did you just get the report in? Yeah, the report just came in, I believe it was Friday. So you'll have that on the on the website when we're reading. You know, Bob, we put every report in there. Don't I, don't I, I don't know if it's up there yet. We looked. put every report up there. And you, we've always done it. I think you need to do it. We've been very good at sharing as much information as we possibly can. No, no, I know. I, I was just asking him when it was in. Um, and you guys are more than welcome. We're having more skips here from Love Canal yes. um, next Wednesday, so you guys are, are more than welcome to come and join us and listen to our story. Um, she's a very big no explanation. Excuse me? If we have no plan, we're going to be here. It's starting at 7 o'clock. So. Yeah, no, our plan is at 7.30, so. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. All right, that takes us to the next order of business, which is... Lost in the bottom. Uh, report to council liaisons, representatives. Before we get to that, well, let's shoot through that real quick, actually. Um, yeah, the only thing I have is this Sunday at 9 o'clock at Horseshoe Lake is the color fun run that uh, Rotary is running with the Rotary Club of the Rotary at the high school. It starts at 9 o'clock. Um, it's a fundraiser for one of the families in town that fall uh, on hard times. So, um, show up, show up. Yeah. Saturday, is it? Sunday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Maury Castriotis, I'm the landing. Uh, to follow up on Bob uh, Schultz's, I think it's Bob who mentioned about contacting the legislature. Uh, you have a Senate and Assembly Environmental Committee. You took uh, you went to court to try to get core samples and you lost or you gave up in my opinion. So, do you still feel you, sh you should get core samples? Yeah. Do you still believe that you need core samples? To finish our report, yes. Yes. So, why can't you take it uh, to the legislature? Well, the biggest issue with those particular samples that we were trying to get, which we thought we had a right to get, uh, was they were breaking the cap and it would allow us to get it based upon the emergency order. Mm -hmm. uh, when we lost that, that was also lost because those holes are dug and gone, and it's after the fact. Right, but you still feel you need them, so why? It, there's, there's, no more, there's no more holes being dug. All right, but you mean you, we can't get them without them digging holes? Please. There was an action that was just filed by SFB in the federal district court seeking to have soil samples taken uh, at the landfill. Right. So there may be an opportunity, and we can get the paperwork, there may be an opportunity for us to join in or get that, get the samples to the federal district court without the township spending the money to, to do it. So we'll follow, follow in that case very closely. Okay, and, and if that doesn't, you know, work out, can you take it to the legislature? Yes, make your plea before them, say the DEP is blocking this very much needed, you know, information. Thank you. Yeah, we, I, I can tell you that I've had many conversations with Senator Bucco uh, in, in trying to facilitate 
are getting the samples mm -hmm. that day, as you probably heard me say, I actually thought we had an agreement with DEP, you know, one, the baby step away from it, and getting those samples before um, we were we were stopped, yeah. which you know forced us to court. So. Uh, and what did Senator Bucco say? About this? Uh, he was working on our on our behalf trying to facilitate us getting those samples. But okay. and is that still the, happening? The Attorney General's office, happening? the Attorney General's office, and DEP decided that um, okay. we were not entitled to them. Okay, so, but, again, there's one more venue, is there not? The, the, there's, you know, legislature. So, I hope you will consider that. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Yep, no. Get you next. Bill Morocco, let all eyes are struggling with this. I'm concerned um, about... I know some people have expressed concerns about um, notifying residents, and I know that the township hired experts to put um, to ask them for advice and, and put um, protocols in place for schools and, and ball fields. And uh, we, they, we did have some issues a um, a few weeks ago where the ball fields were were, were actually closed. Games were canceled. Some games were, were relocated. Mm, practices, no games. I'm sorry, practices. Right. And that happened at Emmons Field and at Jefferson. And they and they moved the the games to to a facility where they really didn't have you know monitors in the vicinity. So, um, you know, is, are they just going somewhere where it's out of sight, out of mind? You know, why why don't we feel compelled to put um, to put monitors you know closer to the other schools or? Or, or closer to Horseshoe Lake, where there's a lot of outdoor activity at Horseshoe Lake, and we know the gas has followed, has gone that far before, and you know maybe it's not going there now, but we all know summer's coming, and this new mitigation system isn't installed, and the day could exist where it gets really bad there, and then what are you going to do? Have the police officers tell everyone to go home? I mean, shouldn't we be proactive in, in that sense, and um, you know try to identify areas of concern and, and act on it? I think we have. How? By, by putting the notices up and, and doing the alert systems that we have. Well, we do, but but what happens if, if the levels are too bad at Horseshoe Lake? You know, to extend it? I mean, how do you know that they're bad? I mean, I'm just saying that's an area where there's a lot of children playing, and you, you spent a lot of money with the, on these with these experts, you know, putting these protocols in place and doing all this research, and they gave us um, good data, but we can't do anything with it for a lot of, at a lot of the locations where the games are played because you know there's no monitors. I, I can tell you this, is, is, you know, we put monitors around areas and in, in advance of areas so that, in, and that's actually in advance of Horseshoe Lake as well too if you look at the location. So you would think that if they're in advance of the area, that prior to them getting to Horseshoe Lake you would see significant levels in advance of that. We you know, we're not seeing that right now. Now, as you know, this is one thing that the ATSDR will look at. If you looked at their reports, they'll come back and talk to you about where your monitors should be located and things of that nature as well, too. So, by the time they're in town looking at that, if, and I know, you know, the residents, these are all issues that we hope that you can bring to them as well, too, and talk to them about. If we can, if we can look at relocating some of the monitors, if they feel that's advisable, we can do, we can do that as well too. We also, as you know, the monitors are reimbursed by the DEP as well, so we'd have to get them on board in regards to the reimbursement. So. I understand all those points, you know, but Good. but you know, there were high levels at at Emmons Field, which is in advance of Horseshoe Lake, but no one knew that it was safe or unsafe at Horseshoe Lake. The levels in Emmons Field, the last ones I think we had were in the 12 to 13 range. They have dropped down since then. I understand, but I'm saying the same day, if, if the game was rescheduled, you know, how do they know that? Well, as you know, out? as you know, most people do do smell this at 10 parts per billion. We were not getting complaints of the smell at Horseshoe Lake. But Bill, you raised some good questions. But we know that these people are coming in, and we know that this is something that they will look at. Okay, so you, 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 I, I'm not, I'm not, keep, I'm not demanding you do it. I'm saying, I'm just saying that no, it, I think, it would be good to consider. And and I don't think that we should be hiding behind the ATSDR. I think we should be no, making, I, I don't make, think making, we are. making good decisions and being proactive, and not necessarily waiting for them to tell you the obvious. 
Well, if it's obvious, they'll tell us. Okay. okay. And and in addition to that, you know, I was disappointed to to hear that. I know the town and and the um, you know the the board of education really have no jurisdiction over private schools, but they can give them information. And um, I can tell you that my daughter's nursery school, um, the director of that school, really had no idea what was going on. She's um, from a different town, and she claimed she was never notified about anything. Mark Caputo did show me that he sent a letter um, over a year ago, about a year and a half ago when this first started, mm -hmm. which I think was, was very incomplete. We've, we've learned a lot of information since then. We have these great protocols for children, but now these nursery school directors are letting these young children outside to play uh, while, you know, potentially down the street, Jefferson School uh, won't let them outside if the levels were to reach, you know, that yellow or red alert. And I think that they should be notified. And, and doesn't the township or the, or the Department of Health feel the responsibility to do so? Well, your original, your original assertion was that we had not notified them. And Mark, Mark provided you the, the letter that we had notified them. I'll get back with Mark and see if he, will, if he thinks it's in the best interest to provide them additional information. That's a legitimate request, and I'll bring it back to him. But you're, they were notified. Well, they were notified back when this first started. And the assertion was that they were never notified. Well, my director wasn't notified because she's only at the school about a year. Well, we will we will make sure that she gets notified. And you know, they were no, basically what they were notified is that there's there's hydrogen sulfide gas coming off the landfill, and there may be symptoms of X Y Z. The time the letter went out, we didn't have a monitoring system. Um, so, some of these nursery schools, because uh, my my daughter actually goes to, to two, they don't even know about the monitoring system. They don't know how to check it. They don't know the website. They don't know what levels are, you know, what levels are of concern. So I'm just saying we have this information. You know, why hasn't that information been sent, been sent to the schools? And that hasn't been sent to the schools. Well, you you're asking me today to do that. We did send a letter. Rest, and I'll follow up with that. I think you had a great point before. Contact uh, uh, the health department. That's exactly. What I'm find doing. out what they feel should be notified to them because it is a school situation. I certainly think well, it's notifying the schools, schools of the appropriate right. scenarios is more than. I know. I, I, more than, I, know I mean, we're laboring the point, we've already said that we're going to do it. Yeah. We'll take care. We'll okay. take care of schools. So thank you. I just, I'm just asking for someone to follow up because I didn't seem to be getting anywhere with with, with, with Mr. Caputo. He basically, you know, he said that he, he sent this letter and. The only will be able to take care. The only thing I saw was they weren't notified, then we saw they were. I didn't see any follow up after that. So. This is the first time I'm here to follow up, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience wish to be here? Yes, ma'am. I shouldn't have asked. I already told you I was going to call on you. Um, Angela Johnson, 3 Rollins Court. Um, I just have a couple things. Um, the first one is I can't remember if the, if the DEP, um, did they ever clarify on their stack tests? Because I guess I'm getting concerned because I hear people talking about the monitors being low or the monitors being high and people smelling stuff when the monitors are low or people not smelling stuff and the monitors are high and like what else could there be? Are they monitoring for anything else? Are they constantly checking the smokestack and are those results being released or? They they're monitoring for H2S and SO2. They did some smoke. They did some stack testing, which I believe has been circulated uh, early on. Did and they find any other gases? I have, to, I have to go back and look at the reports myself. Okay. Do they constantly monitor for other things? I thought they were putting something up there to uh, monitor for other things. They, they, they are putting. Uh, they are putting a stack test itself, which is really set up to establish that if they go over certain levels, it shuts down. But certain levels of SO2? SO2. SO2. Okay, but, but they, like other things. Right now they're doing H2S and, and SO2. Okay, I just, I mean, I, it's just myself too driving down the mountain. I think it was maybe last week it smelled strong and I called the complaint into the DEP. And I did even go look at the monitors and they weren't reading that high and I was surprised. And it was by the time I got to work that I went back and looked. That it, but I mean, it was, it was strong. So, um, but anyway, just wanted to see if we could ask them to do some other testing or something. I don't know, just for other, maybe it's something else. I don't know. That, that, for that smell, you know, not that I'm aware of, but we can follow up with it and certainly with the ESR. Um, 
and then the other thing is, I know, Mr. Bucco, you said that, um, you know, to fight, to contact the Attorney General, the DEP has done something criminal. I mean, I think we all know that something's not right. I mean, you know, they've done some questionable things. Isn't there anything else we can do? Who can we contact? Even if it's not criminal, if you're not doing your job, it's not right. I mean, what can we, what can we do? Who can we turn to? I mean, I guess if the residents want to file individual, um, an individual complaint or a request with the Attorney General's office, sure. that probably is where the, uh, where the request should go, you know, to the, to the New Jersey Attorney General's office. Okay. You know, if there's allegations that you feel or, um, you know, are worthy of investigation, then I think he would address a letter to the New Jersey State Attorney General's office, to the Attorney General himself, and ask uh, for you know his response in regard to that issue. Okay. Okay. Um, and then just lastly, I was just curious because I know there's been a lot of information brought up by other people like Mr. Massey or um, Bob Menderos and stuff. Has that been shared with your ex, with Mr. Zelli, the town expert, to get him to weigh in on that additional information? I don't know about Mr. Massey's information, but a, a significant amount and. Uh, Mr. Madera. I know Mr. Rass walked out there. I think Mr. Zelly was out there as well with uh, Bob Madera. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of information. I, I can't speak to 100% because I wasn't there, but mm -hmm. I know quite a bit of information has been shared along the way. Because I mean, I'm just assuming he had to base his stuff a lot on information from the DEP, and if we're questioning about some of the assumptions made by the DEP, is he getting all the information that other folks are no, bringing up as well? There's some pretty good USG information though, on the streams themselves. And in fact, there was a report, uh, I don't know if it's on the desk, I'll see if I can't get it, I believe it's on our website as well too, where they actually get a, a, a lot of photographical information about the streams that was at the informational center. Uh, at the public meeting. So they did, they did a lot of independent work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a public question to be heard? Yes, ma'am. I just was wondering if uh, you had any um, call from the high school uh, principal about not H2S, but um, a different smell this past week with regards to a petroleum smell or what uh, my daughters go, go to that school and you know one was dizzy came home didn't feel well and uh, a teacher actually moved the classroom to a different to the media because of it then a uh, you know like a public announcement whatever you want to call it was of the intercom saying that it was uh, smoke because it was Teacher Appreciation Week or something from uh, barbecuing outside or something. But and we, we just we, wanted we, to know if you had heard from the principal. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll go this way. Uh, when this first started, you know, the landfill problem, uh, I was in Ledgewood uh, Mall, and you could smell it in there. And I know it's true because my girlfriend works for selling kitchens, kitchen magic or something, and she said she got her sick to her stomach and uh, had trouble breathing. But it doesn't seem to be a problem now. I don't know what's going on, but maybe the problem is solved. I hope. Well, I don't think it's there yet, but uh, you know, steps have been taken, and. Uh and they have a process of burning off some of the gas. I'm sure things can improve, but I think that's some of the improvement, but we're getting to the warmer months, so now yeah, the it time takes to time to solve problems. You don't solve them more at once, but I'm, I'm glad that all of you are working on it. It'll get, it'll get straightened out. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Okay. That's great. <laughs> talk about a uh, an article that I was reading about the uh, DEP's 
saying that the, the water runoff that they are calculating for is for a 25 year storm. Under SEP's plan, they were uh, calculating for a 100 year storm, and we have had three 100 year storms in the past two years. So if nothing else, is wrong about the DEP's plan. That part is wrong and should be corrected because the uh, Joe Dunn was saying a year ago that uh, with SEP's plan even, that there would be as much water coming down the mountain and also uh, Mountain Road and Lookout uh, in a hundred year storm to actually put Morristown under water. And uh, there's people living at the bottom of that hill. And there needs to be more uh, attention paid to the ramifications of uh, a 25 year storm versus a hundred year storm. I think we're way past the 25 year storm with uh, climate change and it should be addressed by the council and by the township attorney. Actually, I'm going to send an email to, uh, to Joe Dunn tomorrow and, and let him know your concerns. That's, Thank you very that's who much. should be addressing. Thanks. Uh, just a real quick clarification. Um, Councilor Rupa, you just mentioned the Attorney General's office, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, before, we were talking about the U.S. Attorney's office. Um, is there a different set of criteria uh, that's required to get something going in those two offices? Is that why you're recommending? Well, the, the Attorney General's office oversees the operation of the state government. The U.S. Attorney's office would get involved only in criminal nature, uh, something of a federal criminal nature. But the U.S. Attorney, the, the New Jersey State Attorney General, wouldn't necessarily um, be prohibited from investigating something that may not be criminal. Okay. Okay, and for the U.S. Attorney's Office, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice Attorney's Office, um, I assume that the burden of absolute proof of some criminal wrongdoing is not on the person making the citizen's complaint or whatever form the complaint takes, that there's some level of evidence that they expect in order to take some sort of action, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, if you submitted something to the U.S. Attorney's Office and said, you know, I believe X, Y, and Z has occurred, then they don't just take those from away. They'll take them, hand them to an investigator, and an investigator will look into the matter and determine whether or not there's sufficient evidence to move it to the next level. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? See, now we'll close the public portion. Let's read in. Uh, we got several. Um, uh, executive session items.